Greetings and welcome to Pin by Help. Mike here. Today I thought I would talk about uh, something that you'll commonly run into working on pinball machines and other electronics, and that is uh, connectors. Sp specifically, Molex connectors. These are those plastic things that um, you'll unplug and unplug. You're in everything from computers to electronics, and they're in the, the newer modern pinball machines too, as well as the early solid state games. Now, they come in a whole bunch of different sizes, and what happens if you need to repair one of these connectors or replace them? I'm going to go over the different common sizes and how to work on these things. So there's three main sizes that you're most likely to run into. And in the pinball realm, thank you. In the pinball realm, it's uh, measured in inches. I think you may also find it measured in millimeters, but uh, I'm going to use the standard traditional references. Mm -hmm. Um, there's 0 .062 inch, that's the smaller ones um, that, are, that are like this, this is an example. They're, um, there's a pretty nice size, there's a male and a female connector, and um, those are the 0 0.062 inch connectors, and there's a set of, there's a male and a female pin that plugs into it. The, 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 sh the hollow one here is where the male pins would go, so they're protected by the outer housing. And then this deeper one is where the female pins would go. And the housings are keyed. You can see there's like, there's a marks in here, so it can only be inserted one way. And different, the different connectors have different kinds of locking mechanisms and stuff like that. There's the smaller ones, the 0.62s. You may run into these, but it's more often that you're going to run into the slightly larger one, which is the 0 0.093. And um, there's an example of an older box of parts and it's basically they look the same they're just a little bit slightly larger you can also find uh ran the kind of no-name stuff from uh, china that are that are not molex that you can also use if you need to do a connector i don't know i, I just got these i've been playing around with them i they're nowhere near as good a quality as the american made molex stuff and then here's a more modern kit that you can get which would come with a little universal tool which i've got over there this one is for 0 0.062, and it comes with some male and female pins. It also has the extractor tool, and you'll see here there's um, there's two different. Uh, see, there's like a, a thing, and you push it in to uh, extract the tool, and I'll I'll demonstrate that. And uh, this has got different connectors for different numbers of uh, connections and things like that. So I'm going to take the tool that from the 0 0.62, and we're going to pin uh, 0 0.093. Uh, connector over here. So that's what we've got out. And let's just take a quick look at this and I'll run through the process of how this works. So this is a common connector you might find, say, in the Bally 35s or the Stern MPU 100s, those early solid state games. These often had these connectors uh, connecting to coin door switches and stuff to the rest of the cabinet. And you'll find them in the back boxes too. These connectors just plug and unplug. And there's different sizes and configurations of them. And um, I'll show you, if you need to remove a connector, there's, diff there's pins and there's a different, different tool often for the male and the female. It just depends on the type of connector and what you're using. But um, the way these things work is they click into place. So let me, uh, let's make one and then I'll show you how, how we can remove them. Um, and there's different kinds of tools. So we're going to take a, and there's also different kinds of, um, so you have your male and your female pins. You also have them based on the size of the gauge of the wire. This is a this is some male pins, 0 .093, um, 14 to 20 gauge wire. This is for 18 to 22 gauge wire. So you want to check to see what kind of wire, what's the size of the wire you're using, because that may also come into play when you're trying to uh, get the right tools for the job. So we're going to take this. This is, I believe, a, this is a, t a 20 or a 20 gauge wire right here. And we're going to make a, uh, I've got a female connector here already made, so I'm going to make a male connector. So what you do here, here's our tool that came out of the kit. You'll see there, there's, it's a multi-tool, so it's got the things for cutting. These are pretty crappy here. But this is what we want at the end. There's two things labeled A and B, and they're for different kinds of uh, connectors. I believe the B is probably for the 0.62. And A is probably for the 0.93. So we're going to set it up, set this up. So you'll notice on these things, there is two tabs. There's an outer tab and an inner tab. And then you've got your connector, whether it be male or female. Now, 
we're going to have the wire trimmed with insulation off and so the insulation will be where the first tab, the outer tab is, and then the exposed wire will be where the, the uh, inner tab is. So the first thing we'll do is we'll load this into this and we'll make sure that the, the top pointy part where the letter A is, and we're going to line this up so it's on the inner tab. So there it is right there, if you can see. And we're going to feed this wire in. Okay, this is in, right there, and then squeeze and crimp. So you can see we've got the inner exposed wires now crimped around that inner tab, and now we've got this, uh, this outer tab. So we'll crimp that around this one. Some tools have different settings on the tool for crimping the insulation as well as the inner wire. This one doesn't, it just has two different sizes, but sometimes they have ones for the, for the insulation and for the inner and the outer. Okay, so there it is, it's, it's on, it's nice and solid, so we're gonna put it into our male connector. So we'll just push this in until we hear it click. So you can hear it click, listen. Heard that click, and then that's in place and that pin is there. So we'll do the same thing with the female. We'll uh, push this in until we hear it click, and now that's in there. And so there's our, our, our rebuilt, repinned connectors. We can push them together, and we've got a nice, good, solid connection. Now, if you need to remove these things, there's different tools. There's a different size tool depending upon the type of Molex connector you're using for the inner and the outer. Now, I happen to have, um, I don't know if I've got the right tool for the female ones. I think I'm, I'm I think this is not quite the right tool. But this, both of these are for the, the male end of the connectors, I believe. So I'll show you. The way it typically works is you put this connector in and you push it in, and then this one, you uh, get it over the pins and then you push and it comes out. Wait a minute. Let me get this right. There we go. And then the pin comes out. So you can remove and service these or put them back in and then they should click again and you're back in business. So that's how you pin and repin the connector. Sometimes it's not easy to get these things out too. And there's different types of connectors and pins and some of them um, are a little bit easier to work with than others. This is a this is a one tool that's spring loaded. And uh, this one is not spring loaded, but you have a little plunger that you can push. And uh, so you can get these these tools. I, you can get them off of eBay or Amazon in like a, you know kits of different sizes. Uh, every every type of connector will use often a slightly different size tool. Um, but with this knowledge, you can build you can rebuild your own connectors completely. So. There you go. This is the .093 of an inch connector, which is the more common one. And um, that will help you fix some very common problems in some of these machines. A lot of times uh, the connectors get all messed up and everything, or you just want to rebuild everything. So there you have it. For more, visit pinballhelp.com. Catch me on Twitter. I'm on uh, uh, YouTube and at uh, slash pinballhelp. And thanks for watching.